Blog Talk Radio. I wish I had an angel for one moment of love. I wish I had your But if the window was closed, he tossed the coins up through the chimney. 
when the, and that was how that came through. Then flying through the sky, we also have an earlier version, the Norse god Odin, who rode an eight-legged steed that was sometimes white, sometimes depicted as gray. And of course, in Greek mythology, we also have the winged horse Pegasus. Now, with that backdrop, what about the possibility that Santa Claus actually existed, but perhaps was an alien or supernatural being? And, of course, we have a number of, for example, biblical cases of aerial travel. So I turn that over to our co-host, Benny Guzman, our theological expert. Benny, what about some of those cases of flying beings in the Bible? Oh, yeah, man. This this is this is like a gold mine. The Bible is full of these. And um, let, let me pull up my computer Bible here and go to my manual. I'll read one over in uh, Isaiah. Um, actually, before I even pull that one up, uh, let's, Jesus, okay. He um, he is the all-time um, eternal rock star. Now he, when you talk about an exit, when he left planet Earth, I mean he was received by a cloud. Okay, he goes up, you know, and and these and his and his apostles were looking at him, and and these two beings appeared there with the apostles They're like, hey, he's this same Jesus. He's going away, but he's going to come back in like manner, you know. So here you've got these these two alien beings that appear there and talking to the apostles. And Jesus, with like the the most awesome exit, going going up into uh, this cloud, which is uh, the same thing that Moses and, has seen when he's leading the the Israelites out. Um, and an interesting thing is Jesus is going to come back in the same way. So he's going to be rocking a spaceship when he comes back to get his people. You know, because uh, like when you okay, well, like when you're driving a spacecraft, okay, what are you going to see if you're looking in the clouds? You're going to see these lights just shining and beaming in the clouds. And there's a scripture all over the Bible that supports this. Like when Moses went in to get the, com- the commandments, he actually went aboard the craft, you know, and, and was told to make the uh, the Ark of the Covenant like that craft. So when you look up images like on Google of what the Ark of the Covenant looked like, or even in the Bible when you read the description, you see he built it like this craft. And when he came off the mountain, his face glowed because he was aboard this craft. So yeah, Jesus, he's he's rocking a spaceship. But let me pull this place. I think it's over in Isaiah. Let me get my menu up here. Um, so you got anything to say while I'm pulling this up, Doctor? Well, I just wanted to point out we have many other depictions beyond the Bible of ancients who were flying. For example, at the Abydos Temple in Egypt, there is a one section which appears to show a helicopter and two modern-looking aircraft. Then in the Kosovo Cathedral, there are a number of depictions on the walls which appear to show single entities in what might be called space shuttles. And again, these were these were depicted as apparent entities that could fly. And uh, then I point out that we have in ancient India from the Rig Veda what are called the manas. These were crafts that were being flown and used. In fact, they even had weapons and they... Uh, destroyed cities on the ground from the flying Vimanas. And that's V-I-M-A-N-A for any of you taking notes. And then, of course, uh, we have from uh, the Inca architecture, the Palenque, P-A-L-E-N-Q-U-E, which certainly appears to show uh, some sort of an astronaut in a single uh, occupant vehicle flying. So all these depictions make us ask the question, were these just imaginings from the local artists of the time, or were there actual entities that were flying about? And since it was well before we developed the airplane or spacecraft, could these possibly have been alien entities? And, of course, that ties into Santa Claus. Instead of in a sleigh, perhaps he's flying around in some sort of vehicle distributing gifts. So there there are a number of interesting historical oddities that make us at least ask if it's at all feasible that Santa existed and might have been an alien being. Exactly. I got that passage, uh, okay. Doctor. It's uh, the one that right, is Isaiah 19.1. Okay, uh, that's Isaiah 19.1. That says, um, The uh, burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud. That's what I was telling you guys earlier. And shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. Uh, now, this is... Um, I mean, like I say, the Bible is full of these uh, stories, full of these crafts. Uh, as I've always said many, many times, the Bible is the best UFO book ever written. And another thing with Santa Claus, okay, he's immortal, 
Okay. Uh, evidently, he, you know, he's he's um, interdimensional, um, and uh, he has these magical powers, and and you know, time travels with him. See, so he he's one that that operates in the physical realm, but time travels with him. You know, I don't know how that works, but yes, no doubt, Santa Claus, the modern Santa Claus, an alien. Got to agree with you on that. Hey, another interesting fact about Santa Claus is Constantine. He he actually freed Santa Claus because Santa Claus, or or Nicholas, the, you know the the actual Christian Saint Nicholas, Nicholas, which he was a bishop, you know, uh, and he gave to the poor money. So he he come from a, a very wealthy family, and uh, and so he he gave to the poor, you know, and he became a bishop. And their and their clothing was the the red and and the white, you know. He became a bishop of the church. But anyway, he he became. Um, uh, you know, abused and beaten because of of being a Christian, and ended up in prison for it. You know, he's a martyr, and uh, and Constantine, uh, he he actually freed Santa Claus. So that's a, a little fun fact there. Okay, that's I know. Yeah, you get anything else, Doctor? Or you want me to continue with the scripture, or? Well, just if we could mention a few other cases of flying entities or entities flying in some sort of craft, like the case of Ezekiel, chapter one. Verses four through ten. Do you want to share that with us? Uh, yeah, and it's just chapter one. And let me uh, get there if you want to mention anything. I'll key it in on my computer Bible here. We have so many cases in the Good Book of entities flying, and uh, as as Benny pointed out, this is an excellent source of possible ufological material because uh, these, especially Ezekiel. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I lo- I love Ezekiel. And 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 what Ezekiel is well, let's look at Elijah for a minute. Well, he's okay. seen that this chariot of fire. Chari- chariot means to ride, which and what this is is called a Merkaba. M e r dash k a h dash b a h. This is an interdimensional light vehicle. Now, anyway, over here in Ezekiel chapter one, um, we'll start here at verse one, if that's okay. It says, "Now it came to pass in the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Kabar." Uh, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. Uh, in the fifth day of the month, uh, which was the fifth year of King uh, Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressively unto Ezekiel, the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of... Uh, I don't even know how to say that word. Verse four, the, verse 4 is the beginning of the... Story. Start verse 4, okay. All right, I figured we'd get... Okay, but yeah, verse 4. All right, and I looked... And behold, a whirlwind uh, came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire um, enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. Now notice, a lot of times in the Bible when you see these, it has the same description, like I said with the Moses and the children of Israel. Anyway, and out of it, the mist thereof, as the color of amber, out of the mist of the fire, also out of the mist thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And every one had four faces, and every one had four wings. And their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a, of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another, they turned not when they went, they went every one straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side, and the four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. Thus where their faces and their wings were stretched upward, two wings of every one were joined one to another, and two covered their bodies, and they went every one straight forward, whither the spirit was to go, they went, and they turned not uh, when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps. Now, this right here is the same craft that Moses went aboard. You know, when you read about, when you learn about when he was given the uh, the Ten Commandments uh, or uh, when he was building the Ark of the Covenant, you know, when he was building the Ark, he went aboard this this craft, you know, when he was given the directions to this. And when he came off the mountain, uh, his his face glowed. Anyway, uh, went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. And the living creatures ran and returned 
as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Now as I beheld, the living creatures beheld uh, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. This is verse 16. The, uh, the appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of beryl, and they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Right. When they well, went, that, do you want me to stop there, Doctor? Yeah, I was going to say that uh, Dr. Joseph Bloomrich, who had been part of one of Brown's team from Germany working on our space projects, actually analyzed this and wrote a book called The Spaceships of Ezekiel, in which he created a design based on the scriptures there and argued that this was indeed an alien spacecraft. Now, the question, did they actually have four different faces, or were these just advanced well, enti entities who might have been uh, using holographic projections of different faces that the humans they encountered would recognize? And I actually did. studied that, Doctor. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Um, with the four faces, uh, when I studied this out before, they, they are the, the four faces are symbolism. Now, yeah. also over in Revelation, there there's mention of another creature similar to these cherubs, um, uh, we won't get into that now, but uh, but anyway, the these faces, it, according to way I, to my notes and everything, the way I say there was symbolism. But now, the, as far as the wings go, they did have four wings. Now, these these creatures here driving this craft um, are called cherubs or uh, cherubim. Cherubim is, is a plural word. And over in Ezekiel chapter 28, we learned that Lucifer is a cherub. So again, there is uh, again Lucifer, Satan drives a spacecraft which actually all the all the angels or you know i hate that word uh, all the aliens they drive uh spacecraft you know so this again here okay these are cherubs ezekiel 28 says lucifer is a cherub so therefore he drives spacecraft and again just a special note that the cherubs and and the seraphims now seraphims they actually have six wings and seraphim means burning ones uh now these two types of creatures are not angels because they don't deliver messages Again, right. those no, take no those. actual angels were depicted as having wings until Renaissance artists uh, added wings to them. Exactly, exactly. So these creatures, the cherubim and the seraphim, are not angels because they don't deliver messages, because the word angel means messenger. And according to Ezekiel 28, Lucifer is is a, is a cherubim. So therefore, you know, and this right here tells you this is one of his crafts, what he drives, you know. Okay, so what we've, I think, established is that there are a number of accounts of entities flying what we might call space shuttle or spacecraft, and that would be ideal. Instead of a slave flying through the sky being drawn by reindeer, perhaps this is what the actual Santa used. And, of course, the next question would be, how could he possibly deliver gifts to even hundreds of thousands at that time and now millions or billions of people well, extraterrestrial technology might allow for that, such as through uh, dematerialization and rematerialization, otherwise known as teleportation of gifts. Also, because he's an advanced being, he could be a, what we call a superluminal being or, or have a superluminal craft able to exceed the speed of light and therefore to, uh, carry out this deed. Now, we've talked about Noah's Ark before, and I asked, well, how could Noah and his wife and their three sons and children, eight, eight of them total, gather together two of every creature, and in some cases we're supposed to get seven pairs of every creature on our planet. How could they possibly have done that? Sounds like, again, alien technology, which could use some sort of teleportation device to detect the creatures they wanted, dematerialize them, rematerialize, rematerialize them aboard the ark. Uh, again, that would be the only logical way this could be done. I know people are skeptical about the idea of ancient a astronauts, but uh, certainly these descriptions would call for some sort of advanced alien technology that we don't even have today. Exactly. And um, also, you know, Santa, if he's delivering gifts, let's say he's got thousands and thousands and thousands of gifts, um, there could be, let's say, his his craft, whatever is, I don't know, let's just say 30 feet by 30 feet, okay, he could have a world supply of gifts in that small compartment. I guess kind of like... Um, What's the, what's the word I want to use? Okay, it, on the outside it looks like 30 feet by 30 foot squared, but on the inside it may be miles and miles and miles big. You know that's what I mean? Like an endless mass of... That's a very good point. And are you, are you a fan of the Doctor Who TV series? 
Uh, yes. And you know that the idea is that his, he has a, a spacecraft that's supposed to be a, a British telephone. Um, yeah. Uh, I never thought of it like that. Yeah, it's his station, but inside it's extremely large, so that you have that dimensional disparity. Outside it's just the size of a phone booth, inside it's the size of a huge craft. Exactly. So that's uh, exactly I've what heard you're people, saying. I've even heard people speak of, of actual spacecraft that, you know, you on the outside you see this large spacecraft, but on the inside there are, it's, it's just endless, you know, it seems endless, you know. Right. Uh, and and that's in theory, I believe that like Satan and his uh, the ones who follow him, his, his these other aliens, um, I believe it ain't so much that they're on a planet, but um, in their spacecraft. I would say when they come to Earth, not only are you going to see like huge, big motherships, but probably within that mothership are probably millions of like other smaller craft. You know. And I was going to mention another aspect with. Uh Santa, we hear, of course, that he's assisted by elves. Well, we, of course, could equate elves to the little greys, not necessarily little green men, but little greys, and uh, he'd be the two different types of aliens. As some UFO contactees have claimed that they've encountered both humanoid aliens as well as little greys on the same spacecraft they've been, been taken aboard. Then I should point out that we have the a theory that the um, Great Pyramid was built not by humans but by aliens, but possibly another theory is that members of the Egyptian mystery schools used a levitation wand to move those 2.1 million blocks in place, which would have, uh, as I pointed out before, it took 20 years to build. But if they were building, using some of them weighing from one to up to 40 tons for, per stone for the largest of the pyramids, the, the Great Pyramid, the, uh, they would have had to move one in place every one and three quarters minutes, working 24-7 without any time for rest, even if you had different crews. It, it seems to be beyond the capability of humans, unless they had some sort of advanced technology such as a levitation one. Well, of course, that same type of technology could be used to move gifts of, to, to all the place, to all the homes of the world if aliens were so dis inclined. Of course, why would they do that? We don't know. Perhaps these are very uh, beneficent beings that want to be kind to humans. But it, it, theoretically, this would be possible with alien technology, I think, to carry out Santa's, uh, Santa's deeds in one evening. Exactly. And, and I was going to point out, we had thought most of the third the Egyptian uh, and his, the claims, and these are uh, sound reasonable, that first, well, he is conducting maneuvers on the, on the Sinai Desert that he and his troops saw UFOs. One of them landed. He was taken aboard and uh, then saw the earth from the sky and then returned safely. So while well, Thutmose wasn't an alien, perhaps he encountered aliens. So we have so many of these ancient accounts make us think that it's possible that aliens were on our planet in the past, and if so, they would have the technology to create the the, the deeds that, Santa, that are attributed to Santa, and therefore we could ask if Santa himself is an alien. Um, you know how, Doctor, everybody, uh, you know, some people say, like, um, different stars, people in politics could be reptilian, right? You know how yeah. people talk? Okay, Um it could even be possible. Well, I just say, what do you think um, of of Santa being reptilian? I mean, is that is that a possibility? Because some people say Oprah is a reptilian. Some people even say no, Obama or the Bush I family. I tell that theory, and uh, all I can say is I keep an open mind on all of these possibilities. I hadn't thought of Santa as being reptilian because we we do have some accounts again of people claiming they've encountered reptilian humanoids when being spirited aboard a UFO. And uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, Dr. Uh, Dale Russell from the University of, from the uh, National Museum of Canada in 1982 argued that if the dinosaurs had not died out, the stenonychosaurus, a long-clawed reptilian, about three feet tall, had the largest brain of any dinosaur for its size, would have evolved into an upright standing humanoid creature, about 90 pounds, four feet tall, with a, a fairly well-developed brain. 
dinos died out here, although on other planets dinosaurs might have existed and gone through that evolution. So certainly, uh, again, another possibility that I don't think can be discounted. And I was going to just mention we talked about Santa at Magnetic North. It's possible that an, ed, an alien might be based at the, at the Arctic near the because they want to utilize the electromagnetic fields of our planet. And this would be an ideal location for that, whether it's for, for riding a spacecraft to deliver gifts or for whatever purpose. Certainly there could be some logic in being having a base established. And as you know, we have that HARP project, H-A-A-R-P, our government's top secret project, possibly trying to you know, tap into electromagnetic waves. So, again, all bets are on. And I should point out there was a sleigh runner, which is just one part of a sleigh that apparently was found about 800, about 800 years ago, found buried deep in the Nafu Desert of Saudi Arabia. In fact, um, we wanted to have him on tonight, but he was not able to attend. Douglas Cheney, who produced the film Search for Santa, argues this is one piece of evidence for the existence of Santa Claus and that he might have been uh, around many hundreds or thousands of years ago on our planet, might have been an alien. I had the high honor of participating in that video. Doug couldn't be here tonight, but he felt that was an important piece of evidence. And there's something called the Svoboda film. It's similar to the Patterson film for, for Bigfoot. It's uh, 17 frames, but it seems to show possibly Santa Claus flying through the air. Again, I know skeptics are, are, are doubtful, but I keep an open mind. It's been analyzed and reanalyzed. Something you're familiar with the Patterson film for uh, showing the, the Bigfoot creature in California. Yeah. yeah. And this is this is certainly not as well known because people haven't talked about Santa in the context of being an alien. But this also another piece of evidence suggesting the possibility that Santa was an alien being. He has to be. I mean, no doubt about it. I mean, because he's immortal, and um, or even, uh, let's kind of lay this card on the table. Um, okay, we know that, that Elijah was caught up. Okay, well, you know, he, uh, okay, Nicholas, you know, the, the saint, he, he was of God. He, he was a Christian. He, he suffered for Jesus Christ. And um, as far as I know, I've not, what I've read and the research I've done on Nicholas, um, not nothing, I've not seen anything about his death. Uh, perhaps uh, he was taken, uh, given immortality. You know, and and given these gifts to to continue to do good, you know, throughout throughout the world. Okay, and I just want to throw out one more idea. As you say, he was immortal. I don't know if he has to be an immortal being. It could have been uh, an entity that has a much greater longevity than humans. But who's to say there was this one Santa Claus? Maybe this was an entire I... contingent of ETs who landed on our planet, and for whatever reason wanted to distribute gifts, or at least whatever they were doing, led to the, the, let's call it the legend of Santa delivering gifts. It doesn't have to be just one entity. That, that, is, many true. Of them, that is true. Many of them flying about. Again, I, I keep pointing out that today's science fiction is tomorrow's science fact. Anything we can conceive of today, we don't have that technology to do what they're doing, teleportation and superluminal travel. But in the future, I think we will have that capability. Plans older uh, than we are, societies older than we are, can do it. We have 90 seconds. You want to tell everybody about um, about our vacation and everything? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry to announce this. If you're a devoted fan, uh, Benny and I will be on a two-week hiatus returning Friday, January 7th. So for the next two Friday nights, you can just listen to our show online, the MP3 version. Also check out Dr. Rule, that's uh, R-U-E-H-L, the Dr. Rule show put together by Benny on YouTube so that you won't miss us totally. Is that right, Benny? Yep, yeah, that's right. And we got a new show that will be coming up here soon. Um, hopefully I'll have it online in a couple of days. So you guys, if you want to check out the Dr. Rule show, go to youtube.com forward slash bizarre IV. That's B-I-Z-A-R-R-E I-V. Uh, yeah, Doctor, you want to go ahead and take us on out? Okay, now until next time, until next January 7th, may the power of the cosmos be with you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs>